Hurricane Barrel is likely to take a big turn as it heads towards the Yucatan Peninsula and then eventually into the Gulf of Mexico, where landfall in Texas is becoming more and more likely with Hurricane Barrel. So in today's forecast, we're going to break down exactly what you need to know about Hurricane Barrel and what the big changes are to the forecast today and why I think this will be making landfall in Texas as we go further into the weekend. So we're going to begin with the infrared imagery to start, and you'll notice Hurricane Barrel is centered in the Central Caribbean Sea. It is still a very strong category for hurricane with sustained winds near 140 miles per hour. This has been an unbelievable hurricane. It has barely weakened over the last 48 hours, despite there being a lot of wind shear. And wind shear usually weakens out hurricanes like this, but it's just such an intense hurricane. It is really struggling to fall apart. So as of now, there has been very little weakening, but it is going to continue to move west into a more hostile environment later today. And we should start to see at least some more gradual weakening before it gets to the Yucatan Peninsula early Friday morning. For the time being, this is expected to make a close appearance or a landfall in Jamaica as we go throughout the day today, so definitely make sure that you are staying very vigilant if you're in J Jamaica today, as there will definitely be the potential for some big impacts there. This is what the satellite imagery looks like right now, and you'll notice you can't even see the eye of this hurricane. We haven't seen the eye of the hurricane since legitimately like 48 hours ago. It's been a very long time since we've had a clear view of the eye of this hurricane, and it's just completely wrapped in a big eye wall with lots of convection, lots of big thunderstorms developing as well. So overall, just a very unorganized hurricane, at least for now, compared to what we had before. Now, this is a closer view on the infrared imagery of Hurricane Barrel. And again, notice the eye is just kind of not really looking healthy. We initially had a very open circular eye with a lot of dry air in the middle, so it was very easy to see on the infrared imagery. But now it's just kind of wrapped underneath this large area of convection, which is currently approaching Jamaica as we speak. So big thunderstorms and also very heavy rain and extremely high winds are heading towards Jamaica as we speak. The worst of the impacts will be felt on the very southern side of the island. We also have some drier air feeding into the eastern side of this hurricane so there are signs here that this is going to weaken over the next 24 to 48 hours but that doesn't really impact what we're going to be seeing in the Gulf of Mexico at least in my opinion because as this goes over the Yucatan Peninsula it is going to weaken almost no matter what so it doesn't really matter what happens here it matters more about what happens in the Gulf which in a moment we're going to talk about what will happen in the Gulf of Mexico and what could happen in Texas or even Louisiana and as well as potentially Mexico. Now, this is the latest National Hurricane Center update, and one thing I want to point out right off the bat is that the sustained wind speeds have actually dropped to 140 miles per hour in the latest National Hurricane Center update. So that's really the only update so far. The pressure is right near 960 millibars, so it is beginning to weaken at least some. The wind speed out of this is still really significant, though, for Jamaica especially. A 5 mile per hour difference is not going to make really any difference here. It's still a very fast-moving hurricane at almost 20 miles per hour, so it is racing off to the west right now and over the next 12 to 24 hours impacts to Jamaica will continue eventually as we go into late tonight into early Thursday morning there will be significant impacts to the Cayman Islands where there will be storm surge high winds and the potential for flooding rains this is expected to stay as a major hurricane through Thursday morning and then eventually weaken into a category 2 hurricane as we go later into the day Thursday it will likely make landfall in the Yucatan Peninsula as either a high-end category 1 hurricane or a low-end category category 2 hurricane as we go into the very early morning hours on Friday. Now to address this concern we do have hurricane warnings in the red indicating areas that are under imminent concerns for this hurricane and that includes areas from Cancun back towards areas like Playa del Carmen as well and then eventually as this gets back to the Yucatan Peninsula it will weaken back into a tropical storm in the southwestern Gulf of Mexico as long as it goes over the Yucatan which is expected at this point. There was a little bit of concern that this could try to go right into the Gulf without even hitting land, it does not appear like that's going to happen. So that's at least good news. If that happened, that would literally be worst case scenario for the United States. But it is expected to weaken into a tropical storm as we go into late Friday night into Saturday morning. And then eventually as this moves to the northwest in the Gulf, there are a couple of things that I think will happen, or at least a few things I should say, because there's really three scenarios that I think are possible. The first scenario is that this goes right towards Mexico as a tropical storm, maybe a brief category one hurricane, brings flooding rains, it slows down a lot, 
lot, maybe some high tropical storm force winds right along the coastline, and that's really it. The impacts to the United States would be extremely minimal in that case. The second scenario is that this goes towards areas like Texas and northern Mexico, so right near the Texas border, and we do see the potential for flooding rains, hurricane force winds, probably somewhere around a Category 1, maybe a low-end Category 2 hurricane if it got that far to the north, and then perhaps some storm surge for areas along the Texas coastline. The third scenario, which is really worst-case scenario, is that this travels right up this part of the cone of uncertainty, either goes towards like Houston or maybe the Louisiana and Texas border. In this particular case, we could see a much more significant hurricane redevelop because the potential for rapid intensification in this scenario is much higher. What that means is that this could go from a tropical storm or a Category 1 hurricane to something like a Category 3, maybe even up to a Category 4 hurricane. Now, I'm not saying we're going to see a Category 4 hurricane again like we just saw. I'm just saying that is a possibility. Even though the chances of that still remain low, it's something that we are going to have to monitor very closely over the next several days. Either way, any of these scenarios will bring big impacts to the United States in some way, but a lot of areas will be hit more than anything if this does take a much larger turn, which I still feel like is a strong possibility. Either way, my personal forecast is I still think it's going to make landfall somewhere in this area here. So that's at least what I'm thinking at this point, but it could still make landfall back down in Mexico. It's not something we can rule out at this point. Now, here is the spaghetti charts, giving you an idea of where all the computer models are currently bringing Hurricane Barrel beyond where it's at right now. There is at least some good indication right now that this is likely to make landfall somewhere in Mexico, maybe even as far north as South Texas. There are a couple of models that still bring this back up closer to Houston. There's even a couple that bring it up near Galveston and actually turn it back to the east and northeast towards areas like Houston and as well as Louisiana, which if something like that happened, that would make it a very slow hurricane and it would also bring potentially some very flooding rains. Now, it wouldn't be as slow as Hurricane Harvey, for example, but it's still going to be a pretty slow hurricane if something like that does happen. But overall, most models are on board with this making landfall again in the Yucatan Peninsula and then a bit more of a spread as this gets closer to Mexico, Texas, and or Louisiana. Now, this is the ensembles, which are also just another way to look at computer models that are bringing this hurricane into the Gulf of Mexico. And as of right now, many ensembles are really between northern Mexico back into parts of even Louisiana. That's where the spread is on the ensembles, which does mean there is just, again, still a lot of uncertainty on where this makes landfall. But I do think confidence is increasing that this will try to go towards Texas. Now, notice the red lines here. If this goes towards like Louisiana, for example, that would indicate a stronger hurricane over here near Louisiana if it goes that direction, which indicates that we could see rapid intensification if this hurricane does track off to the north towards Louisiana, because it would be over really warm ocean waters, a pretty low shear environment as well, and it would have the potential for rapid intensification. So that is something that we need to watch for very closely. This is the intensity guide on many computer models, really all the models that we just showed you on the graphic before I just showed you the ensembles. Notice all the models still bring this down to a tropical storm or even a category one hurricane. There are a few that keep it higher, but honestly, this is very unlikely to happen. Once we go into Saturday into Sunday, it will likely start to gradually increase in intensity, and that means that we could see this jump up to maybe a Category 1, 2, or even 3 hurricane as it goes into the Gulf of Mexico, but again, that would be contingent on this going towards Texas or even going towards Louisiana. If this goes straight into Mexico, I highly doubt it gets any higher than a Category 1. If it does go towards extreme southern Texas, it might get to a Category 2 level. If it goes towards like Houston or or even to Louisiana, that would again be worst case scenario. This could get to a category two or three, and maybe even higher than that for a category four hurricane. So that's something that we are definitely watching for here over the next several days. And as a reminder, we're going to continue to have daily video updates, so make sure that you're subscribed to the channel, and we'll keep you posted with the latest and everything that you need to know about Hurricane Barrel. Now, I'm going to show you two different scenarios with Hurricane Barrel and where this may track as it moves to the west towards the Gulf of Mexico. This is the icon model. As we go into Friday morning, it'll make landfall in the UK. Tan Peninsula as likely a Category 1 or 2 hurricane. By the time we go into Saturday, it re-enters into the Gulf of Mexico as a tropical storm. The Icon model does have this intensifying, potentially even rapid intensification, as this gets closer to Texas as we go into Sunday afternoon and evening. Again, this would not be something that we want to see because this would be a stronger hurricane in this particular scenario as it moves towards areas like Texas. And the Icon model in particular brings us relatively close to Houston, which is something that we're hoping that does not happen here. As we go into Monday, 
Monday into Tuesday, it slowly drifts to the north and northeast, and eventually would probably bring some rainfall to areas like North Texas, Louisiana, maybe even Mississippi, and perhaps even Alabama. And then this is the GFS model. This is another scenario, so notice it makes landfall in the Yucatan on Friday. The GFS model really has this struggling to redevelop as it goes into the Gulf of Mexico until it gets closer to the Texas and Mexico border, and even in this case, it slows down a lot by Sunday morning, but it does make landfall in Mexico sometime Sunday, according to the GFS model, but it does not get anywhere near Houston or Louisiana. So this gives you a pretty good indication of how much uncertainty still remains with the path of Hurricane Barrel. Just want to let you know, we're going to continue to post updates here daily on the YouTube channel and on our Twitter page and on Facebook, so just follow us with the links down below. I will be away for today and tomorrow, so I won't have any live streams, but I still will have a couple of videos for the 4th of July. And then as we go into July 5th, we'll make a decision whether I have to be back in the weather studio and if we are we'll have a live stream update on july 5th which would be the next live stream on friday so make sure you subscribe to the channel and we'll keep you posted with the latest